So there's, you know, there's so many causes. Um, I might have reached the limit of my phone's capacity to hold a video, but let's see. Um, so, you know, compassion means having real empathy with a person, identifying the, the cause of, of their suffering and, and help helping them if they wish to be helped. First, you need to know if they want to be helped, consulting them about what they need, um, not coming in as a savior, but coming in as an equal, you know, saying we both stand on the same ground. How can I share with you this experience? How can I lift your load? How can I help? break the bonds that create suffering for you. Um, and that means self-compassion as well. You know, that means time to rest, time for happiness, a work-life balance, you know, uh, making better decisions for yourself, you know, regular exercise, all of those things. Um, then there's rejoicing, which is rejoicing in your own good actions as I mentioned, which I already spoke about and rejoicing rather than being jealous, thinking about, okay, well, that person created those conditions and being jealous doesn't really make me happy anyway. So how could I create those conditions in my life for something better to happen? And then there is upeksha, which is equanimity. And equanimity is a really important thing. You know, like maybe if you can't start with loving kindness, you can start towards yourself. You can start with equanimity that, I, you know, even if I can't love myself, I'm not a completely horrible person. I'm not completely evil. There is a good part of me. There is Buddha nature. There is this basic peace. And, you know, another, yeah, it, equanimity is not like being numb or not caring. Equanimity is um, it's just a very balanced view that sees that everything has a bit of truth. Everything has a bit of good and bad in it. And, and every person can change, you know, and, and is able to see another person's point of view and have empathy for that. Thich Nhat Hanh once, once wrote a beautiful poem about a girl who was raped and murdered at sea, like a refugee by a sea pirate. And he also mentioned the point of view of, of the sea pirate who was, who had known nothing but violence and, you know, fear and poverty and, and who carried out that violence that had been done to him onto another person, which was so um, uh, insightful. I'm, I'm not saying that uh, we should be rape apologists or, you know, that we should always sympathise with the perpetrator, not the, the victim. But, you know, he could, he could see the causes and conditions that had led to that horrible suffering and had compassion for both sides, not condoning it, but just having insight into the evil that led to it. You know, because when you have insight into what has created a situation, you also have a way to unpick that net of suffering. Like when we realize there's a problem with male violence, we realize there's a problem with the way we're raising men, there's a problem with the way we teach them to deal with their emotions or not deal with them. There's a problem in the way we teach them to regard women and sexuality, you know, so we know that we need to teach young men a better way of being, be more loving, less brutal. We need to undo patriarchy, have more ideals of healthy masculinity. You know, obviously just shaming men or shaming anyone isn't a great way to teach them. You know, you've got to say to them, well, this is what positive masculinity looks like, you know, and you're not completely terrible. We believe you have the capacity to change. We love you and we want you to come as partners with us to create a better world. Uh, but equanimity is about, um, yeah, it's about seeing both sides and seeing cause and effect, seeing this complex net of interbeing that we live in. And uh, a long-term view, you know, understanding this is impermanent, this won't always be this way. Yeah. Uh, equanimity is, is peace really, you know, it's not holding on, but it's also not avoiding. It's not dismissing. It has empathy. It has insight, has deep and profound and broad view. Uh, and finally, you know, 
when you have a regular meditation practice, you know, like at least 15, 20 minutes a day, you start to have these moments of peace, which is an inner refuge, you know, and where you go beyond gender, you go beyond race, you go beyond language, and you're just sitting in peace, you know, on those rare days when you have a good meditation. <laughs> it's like um, knowing the blue sky is always there, even though the clouds may rage around, you know. Um, Buddha nature is like that, uncovering that basic luminous awareness gives you a sense of spaciousness, a sense of inner peace and refuge that you know uh, there is something bigger than the conditions of this life. There is something bigger than the trials and tribulations of worldly existence. There is a refuge, a sacred space, a, the ground on which we all stand. You know, there is an interbeing that, that life is so precious because life has possibility for awakening. And that everybody is a Buddha to be. Everybody has a divine spark and a and a, a beauty of all of their own, you know, and everybody is their own epic novel, their own universe. Everybody is a precious thread in the net of life. And that peace, you know, helps you let go of trauma, helps you come back to yourself, helps you fill up the well inside, replenish yourself in peace and gives you the courage to keep going on and fighting the good fight um, and returning to Buddha nature. So, you know, when you rest in that peace, there's no, no need to doubt your own worth, nor is there any need to exaggerate your worth um, or to use spirituality to create a new ego, a new identity, a new sense of self, you know, to forge more chains for yourself. Um, it should set you free and make you, and make you realize that the essential sameness and worthiness and equality of all beings. Yeah. So that's what I have to say about self-love. And I hope that you will take some time to come onto your cushion and to uncover peace and Buddha nature and your basic goodness, originally good. Remember that. So if you like, I don't know if we still have time, but we'll see. I'd just like to take you on a quick trip around my monastery. Um, I'm using my front camera, so it's not so great. But this, this is, oh, can you see? This is my greyhound, my rescue greyhound, Sequoia. Hello, Sequoia. <laughs> he spends most of his time sleeping. He's really very sweet and loving. And um, these are some lotuses. This is my shrine room. See, there's a Dakini and there's a famous photo by Steve McCurry of the Burmese nun. There's a angel I painted. Buddha from Thailand. Beautiful shrine. There's a picture I always put in all of the centers I've been in, which is me and the children in Nagpur, India, for the charity I run with um, ex-untouchable Indian Buddhists. Oh, I've got a... No, I'll show you the view outside. <laughs> Let's hope there is enough space for all of this in my phone. So this is a beautiful mountain near Deloraine in Tasmania, UNESCO World Heritage Site. And this is another mountain range. And this is the house. 
this is a what is it I don't know if you can really see oh yeah an angel to welcome me to the monastery this is another angel nun to welcome you to the monastery <laughs> um, and greenhouse so hopefully eventually we'll have a garden we'll be a little bit self-sufficient we have a a range cooker uh, hang on I don't know if you can see sorry there's dirty dirty dishes <laughs> um, but you know there's a wood fire old range this is the there's three three bedrooms well four if you convert one this is our library and another painting that I'm rather proud of I quite like that one that I did and some we have amazing views here and a cool sculpture of a Tasmanian tiger and sorry my I'm doing this all from and my dog again hello Baba <laughs> so that's our monastery I hope you enjoyed the tour I hope you enjoyed the Dharma talk um, we rely completely on donations so if you could offer a donation for this Dharma talk I fully appreciate it and if you can't that's okay and good luck with your practice and may you be happy. All the best.